Hey everyone! In today's video I'll be taking a quick look at the RTX 3080 Ti Gaming OC from Gigabyte, which is a brand new graphics card that will probably be out of stock as soon as it launches. But let's at least try to keep a positive vibe today and see how this card compares to the Founders Edition that I reviewed in my previous video and see if it's worth getting one of these for the official MSRP of one kidney and half a liver. Let's begin! This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Let's start with a very quick summary of the chip itself. The 3080 Ti is the latest GPU from Nvidia that sits between the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090, so it is basically a 3090 with a couple of cores less and 12GB of VRAM instead of 24, so you pretty much end up with a performance that's only a couple of percent behind it, or at least that was the case for the Founders Edition when I compared it to a custom 3090. That makes this a perfect card for anyone gaming at very high resolutions like 4K, but do keep in mind the 3080 is not far behind and it will cost you less, if there is such a place where all these cards are available at their MSRPs. Anyway, this is Gigabyte Gaming OC Edition, which uses the same cooler as they used on their RTX 3080 and 3090 Gaming OC cards. It is definitely a bit larger than the Founders Edition, but it is not as oversized as the really high-end cards like the Aorus Extreme, ROG Strix or MSI Supreme that actually just got in. I think it's a decent looking card and the color scheme is simple and easy enough to match with a lot of hardware out there, which is always a plus. Just you know, don't expect too much in terms of RGB because only the logo lights up. In terms of features, you get the usual fan stop feature when the card doesn't have much to do, which makes it completely quiet when idle and it is also very good for the fans in the long run. It also has a dual BIOS switch, which is always nice to have on a high-end card like this one, but other than that, there is nothing more going on here. There is no displays, no in-fan RGB effects, nothing extraordinary because, at least before this market fiasco, the Gaming OC was always a card that offered good performance for a reasonable price. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that much right now. Now, when it comes to connections, you get three display ports and two HDMI 2.1 connections, so you get one extra HDMI port compared to the Founders Edition, and you will need two 8-pin power connectors to power it up. Well, let's see how this card actually performs. Now, just like always, I do all my testing on my bench with an ROG Maximus 13 Hero motherboard, Intel Core i9 processor and 32 gigs of RAM, but you can check out complete specs in the description down below if you're interested in that. Starting with clocks and in-game performance, there isn't actually that much of a difference between this gaming OC card and the Founders Edition. Clock speeds are very similar and don't change much uh, between the performance and the quiet BIOS either. Now, do keep in mind that all these clocks are well above the claimed boost specs, uh, so both cards are basically acting like a factory overclocked model. And I would say that it's very interesting to know if you haven't bought any GPUs in a while because clock speeds that are listed on a product page don't really mean that much as GPUs almost always boost higher than that. Given that the clocks are so similar means that there won't be any real difference between this Gigabyte and the Founders Edition in games. We can see a single frame difference here and there, but nothing that you would actually notice. But when it comes to thermals, there are actually some significant differences between the two cards. Now, depending on the BIOS setting you choose, the Gigabyte is either much cooler than the Founders Edition at a similar noise level, or it is significantly quieter while still showing better temperatures. With noise normalized to 40 decibels, uh, we see the same pattern here. It ended up having 11 degrees lower core temperature and 16 degrees lower hotspot temperature, which is actually a pretty big deal. Now, I do want to make it clear that the FE is completely fine to begin with, and if you get a chance to buy one at MSRP, you totally should. But the Gigabyte here does have a much better cooler, and it would be a better choice if they cost the same or at least similar. Now, Gigabyte has another little advantage, and that is that the power draw is actually lower than the 350 watt TDP. 
The Founders Edition sat at around 345 watts, while the Gaming OC was closer to 325 watts, both in stress testing and in games. Now, it is possible that I had a bit more luck uh, with this chip, or maybe Gigabyte's board design is a bit more efficient, or both, but even if it pulled those 20 watts more, the Gigabyte would still hold a very comfortable lead when it comes to thermals. Average total system power consumption does stay under 500 watts for both systems, but higher peaks do happen, so I would say a good 850 watt power supply would be ideal when combining a high-end CPU like this i9 with an RTX 3080 Ti, but if you have a good quality 750 watt power supply already, it will do just fine. I won't get into overclocking that much, uh, first of all there is always so little time you get with these cards before the launch and there is only so much you can do in a day and also overclocking is very sample dependent and any result I get with my card wouldn't mean that any of you will get the same result but given the clock speeds I've seen on earlier 3080 and 3090 cards I would guess you should be able to squeeze a couple of percent more performance out of these cards as well just make sure you get a stronger power supply if you plan to overclock and I think that is all I had prepared for today. Uh, in short, you should expect similar gaming performance from this card uh, compared to the 3080 Ti Founders Edition, but then with significantly improved thermals and a tiny bit of a power saving as well. So I would say it would definitely make sense to look into this card, assuming that you can actually find one and assuming that the price is somewhat reasonable which I honestly doubt it will happen. Now, Gigabyte did say that there might be a light at the end of the tunnel, which is kind of hard to believe at this moment. So I guess all we can do right now is wait it out a bit longer and see how it will all unravel. Now, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or if there is anything that wasn't clear in this review, please do leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more content like this one, do not forget to subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss an upload. Bye all and see you in the next one.